Hello and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Erica with Memory Box Candle Co. And I make videos all about the journey of starting a candle business. And today's video, I am actually making candles today, which if you may or may not know, I have not been making candles. Chris has been making all the candles. Uh, currently in this video, I am 32 weeks pregnant, um, but I am filming this video a little bit ahead of time. So this is gonna go up in a couple weeks from now. Um, but today's video, I am going to be making candles for our brand new candle line on our website. I've been so excited about this. Um, it's a new look, uh, not only with the labels, but also with the jars and everything. So um, we have clear jars now, and I've just been super excited about that. So um, what I'm gonna do is basically just hang out with you, make some candles. Maybe you're doing the same while you're watching this video. And I already have both of the digi boils on. So these are our large wax melters that we use. This one contains soy tin. This one contains beeswax um, because it's a blend for the jars that we use with the combination. So I just wanted to hang out with you guys. I do have the window open. I do have Brody in here. Um, I'm hoping that there is going to be no distractions or crazy outside noises or anything like that. Um, but I do want to have some, you know, proper ventilation while I'm making candles. Um, and I'm really not making that many, so I'm not going to be in here for too long. Um, and I also did want to let you know that today's video is actually sponsored by Candle Science. I'm so excited. Um, if you guys know, I have been uh, a huge fan of Candle Science. They've been my number one supplier pretty much for fragrance oils for uh, pretty much the entire length of my business. Um, I really, really love everything that they do, everything they do for the candle making community. I love their products. And even with creating this new line, I was really wanting to kind of expand my horizons in terms of using maybe some other companies fragrance oil and stuff like that, and I did. Um, so there is a total of four uh, new scents that are going to be released on the website. Three out of the four of them are from Candle Science because I just, I can't help myself. It's just, I love their fragrances. I love the fact that they have their clean scents where it's paraben free, phthalate free, uh, toxin free. Like there's so many things that they really focus on when they bring out a fragrance onto their website. And I just really appreciate that. And I feel so much better about having those in my line. So I'm um, really, really excited about that. So thank you so much to Candle Science for sponsoring today's video. Um, and I will have, of course, all of the products, um, the fragrances and everything linked down below, probably in a pinned comment um, for you to check out in case you're interested in any of these fragrances because Again, they've sent me so many over time that uh, I have tried. And as somebody who has tried a bunch of scents before, I mean, the amount of fragrances that I have smelled in my candle making career is crazy. I mean, we have so many one ounce samples, so many samples that I've you know made testers out of, so many things that we've tried. And with this new line, I really just kind of wanted to start off with four fragrances um, because again, when you're adding a lot of fragrances onto your um, line, there's a lot to consider. So you have to think about, you know, do you have the storage space for it? Um, it does cost more money in terms of you're buying in bulk more fragrances than you would if you had a smaller amount of fragrances. So that's definitely something that, you know, we're taking into consideration as well. But I really just wanted to bring something new to the website. And also this is the look, the look of these candles. That is what um, our wholesale line looks like as well. So um, we have our wholesale website and then we also got on FAIR as well, which is the wholesale platform. And the way that the labels look on both of those platforms is the look of the labels of this new collection. So I decided to call this collection the Everyday Collection just because I feel like it's just candles that could be burned every day throughout the year. It doesn't matter what time of the year. The look of the candles, they kind of go with a lot of different, very minimalistic home decor. They're not going to clash 
with probably any kind of decor out there. Um, and so far I've had a lot of feedback from wholesale clients saying that they love the look of the candles and that it's going to go perfectly with their aesthetic, which was really the goal when I was creating those and really wanting to create something that could be a little bit more universal with a minimalistic style that would work with a bunch of different retailers and um, a bunch of different home decor styles and stuff like that. So that was definitely something that I, you know, was looking into when I was creating those labels and just wanting something different than my typical nostalgia collection labels. Um, because those, those are more of what, and what Chris and I talked about was the nostalgia collection. I mean, that is a reflection of me and my story and my memories and being able to share that on my website and also at farmer's markets, you know, vendor events and stuff like that. That's more of something that we're able to share those stories and really connect with people because it's connected with us and, you know, my memories and also Chris is involved in a lot of those as well. So getting to share that in person, it's just different than if people were to buy it wholesale and then nobody really is getting the story kind of behind the scent name and all that kind of stuff. So that's why I chose a little bit more um, simplistic names instead of these kind of you know, crazier names like Trips to Nowhere and, you know, Vinyasa Flow and stuff like that. Um, so there's linen and sea salt and then lavender and rosemary. And it's a little bit easier right off the bat to have just a simplistic label with just the scent names. And that's just how I decided to go because it gave me a little bit more creative freedom. It allowed me to be able to uh, kind of not really start over. I mean, it kind of feels a little bit like a starting over type of thing, but not really, like we're not really creating a separate brand or anything, but I mean, having different kind of jars and then having different labels, um, it just feels, it just feels new. It just feels really new and exciting. So I'm just gonna go through and make sure that all of these are completely dried. I guess the other day when I was helping Chris <laughs> with uh, prepping these, which just involves spraying them with a little bit of alcohol and wiping them clean, so that the wick stickers can adhere. I think I didn't wipe them out properly because he said on some of them, the wick stickers, he had a hard time sticking them down. So I'm really gonna make sure that I am drying these completely. So now these are all cleaned out, ready to go to be wicked. So now I'm going to grab my wicking device, which I will have linked in a pinned comment um, so you can know exactly where I get all of my cool wicking devices that goes as well with the wick holders. These are all kind of more custom to the Cali jars. Although what I've noticed and what Chris and I have noticed is that the Cali jars have been a little inconsistent lately and they don't quite match up completely with the wick holders as well as with the wicking device. Um, so I don't know if there was something that changed with the supplier end with the production of the actual jars that are being made or what, but it is slightly off and that's something that we noticed. Um, so with this, it's just a matter of getting the wicks in. You take off the little sticky part on top and then place it on top. Press it down. And then it puts it two wicks, pretty much centered in the middle. So I'm just gonna go through and I'm going to wick these and get these all ready to go. And this is just, this is a part of the candle making process. I mean, I, I feel like for the past, you know, I mean, Chris has been really a part of the business since last October. So since October, of 2022, he really kind of, I, I wanna say went on full time <laughs> with the business. And, um, you know, it's been fantastic having him do all of the actual production work of the products. And then I've just been focusing on a lot of, you know, computer work and then obviously YouTube and everything like that. Um, so that has been, 
just something that has been really cool. And I feel so lucky that Chris and I have been able to work together and be home together and, you know, do the best that we can with what we have available to us. With this small one bedroom apartment that we've turned into a candle workshop. So I just finished putting on the wick holders on top of all these candles. And it's really just a matter of putting each of the wicks through the little holes. And then I like to twist it because I feel like that holds the wicks in place and it kind of holds them really straight and really taut in the jar. So these are all ready to go. So now what we're gonna do is we're going to pour the amount of fragrance oil that we need to make four candles in each of the scents. So I'm gonna take you on over to the fragrance oil station. So I'm deciding to put on some gloves because I don't want the fragrance oil to get all over my hands. I personally hate when fragrance oil gets all over my hands. So I'm just going to take a scale. This is a gram scale and um, it's very precise on the measurements. So um, I want to reveal the scents for this new collection. So the first one that we chose is Limoncello and this is from Candle Science. So this is what I'm calling lemon cake. So this fragrance is so good. It is probably one of my favorite lemon fragrances that I've ever tried before because either what happens is that lemon could either be, first of all, it can either smell like fuel when it's burning, which this does not, or it can smell like cleaning supplies or like sour, sour lemon. Um, but this one is kind of that perfect blend between lemon and like a vanilla cake kind of scent. So um, I'm really, really excited about that. And I've gotten good feedback so far on just, you know, friends and family trying it out. So I'm going to get this on the scale and then I'm going to tear it. And then once it's teared, it just means that it's only going to weigh out the measurements in the actual container and not anything else. This one just has a little bit left over in it. So this one, I'm gonna be measuring out 88 grams of fragrance oil. So we got 88 grams there. The second fragrance oil that we're using in our new line is Santal and Coconut from Candle Science. And again, with this one, this was actually a fragrance that we used when we did our candle making kits. It was in the Beachy Masculine kit. And I've always really loved this fragrance. It is a very elegant, sophisticated, masculine, beachy fragrance with a touch of sweetness because of that coconut in there. Um, this is actually one of my sister's favorite fragrances now um, because I uh, had her come over and had her smell all of the candles from the new line. And so far, no matter what, uh, everybody pretty much seems to like all of these fragrances. And I'm so happy to hear that because again, one of the best things that you can do is get that initial feedback from friends and family and see how they like it and then kind of go from there and see if you need to adjust anything. But most of the time, friends and family can kind of give you a good indication of if the general, you know, majority of people are going to like that fragrance. The third scent in the line is Sea Salt and Orchid. Now, this is actually a fragrance that I have used in my line before. So this is almost kind of like a comeback kind of scent. I only had it available for a very, very small amount of time. I mean, I think this was even before I kind of redesigned my label. So maybe for the first few months in business, I had this scent. And then for some reason, I just stopped using it. But it's such a good fragrance. And every time I smelled it, I'd be like, man, this is such a good scent. Why did I ever get rid of this one? So this is gonna be called Seaside Flowers. And I decided to just keep the same name that we had done before in the past, just in case there's anybody from that time that had ordered that fragrance that is going to remember and know exactly what it smells like. Because again, it is just, a wonderful beachy kind of floral, fresh and clean fragrance. And then the very last scent in this collection is Espresso from Midwest. And um, this is honestly one of Chris and I's 
favorite coffee scents we've ever smelled, so much so that we were like, we have to add this to the line because we do in our nostalgia collection, we have Malibu Coffee Shop, but with this one, I mean, it's just, it is such a good fragrance and it really is just kind of our favorite coffee fragrance. Uh, we like it way more than Malibu Coffee Shop now. So um, I'm very happy to bring on kind of an additional coffee fragrance into onto the website. So now that the fragrances are poured and ready to go, I'm just going to check the temperature using this um, contactless thermal laser thermometer. I just forgot what it's called. So soy 10 is at about 197 beeswax about 189. So that's pretty good for what I'm needing. I'm really just wanting the beeswax to be hot enough so that it comes out of the spout. And then um, soy 10 just needs to be hot enough so that when the fragrance oil hits it, um, it's going to be able to bind with the wax. So what I'm gonna do first is heat up using my heat gun, the pouring pitcher, so that again, it's hot and it's not cold so that it doesn't rapidly cool the wax when the wax hits it. All right, so now we're ready to pour, turn on the scale, get the pouring pitcher on there, and then I'm gonna tear it just to make sure it's just wax going in there and being weighed. I use these little uh, wooden skewers to stir the fragrance oil in with. Perfect, and then I'm going to quickly pour in the fragrance oil and get this all stirred up. Oh, it smells so good. I've missed this scent so much. So one of the things that I like to do when I am pouring the fragrance oil in and blending it up, mixing it up, is I continuously hold that a uh, little silicone measuring cup that holds the fragrance oil. And that just will get any last kind of drop in there so that I try to get as much of that fragrance oil in there as possible, but there still will be a tiny amount of residue left over. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to heat up my piston funnel, and this is just going to make it easier to actually go through and pour the candles and have them side by side. If I try to use the pitcher when they're side by side like this, it just gets a little bit tricky with the heaviness of the pitcher and the wax in there. Um, so using the piston funnel will be a lot more accurate, less messy, and a lot easier. And then I'm gonna pour about half of this mixture into this piston funnel. I don't wanna make it too heavy because I wanna be able to still control it. And then I'm going to grab my little measuring device. So this is where I know where to stop on the candles. <laughs> and then I'm just gonna take my little measuring device and this is how I know where to stop pouring because there's no actual line on these jars. So I'm just gonna go in And I will take you guys closer in just a moment. And once it reaches that top, I now go on to the next one. And this piston funnel really just makes it so much easier to keep your hands steady, be more accurate and spill the least amount as possible, if any. And then Chris and I's philosophy is we always under pour so we can go through and pour what is needed a little bit at a time just to use whatever's left over inside the piston funnel and kind of top it off, so to speak. And this is also why in my calculations, I always add in a little bit more wax because I take into account 
these slight variations between the pores and also the fact that there could be uh, like a gram or two of wax that sticks to the pitcher or the piston funnel or whatever you're using to pour. So I take that into consideration when I'm creating the formulas and I always add, I think I add three grams onto the total amount needed and that's to take into account all of these slight variations because I want to make sure that um, we are filling these properly and we're not under pouring or saying that we're selling a candle that's 10 ounces it's really a tiny bit less than 10 ounces yes if it's a gram less it's really not that big of a deal but I don't really want like a massive variation um, with what we're selling versus what the actual net weight is now we're putting that on the scale. I have the fragrance oil ready to go. So that is the main thing. You always wanna have the fragrance oil ready to go. So as soon as you get your measurement in here, you gotta work fast to make sure you're putting in the fragrance oil, getting that fragrance oil completely binded with the wax. The camera footage cut off and I didn't realize it until right now. Um, so I just made Santal Beach and I am about to pour it into the piston funnel. And then get started on pouring. So here is the little device that we use. We just put it at the corner. And it's very, very helpful to know where to stop. So right when it touches it is where I stop. And then again, I go back and it'll probably need a little bit more filling up. But I just go right until it touches it. Need to pour more wax into the piston funnel. candle. So as you can see, it's really easy to use this device and have them all next to each other. And you can fit so many more candles on a table than you would if you were using the pouring pitcher to pour because of the angle that you would need in order to pour. These middle candles, those would be very difficult to pour using just the pouring pitcher. Go back, add a little bit to each. Get down on eye level, see if I can see which one's needing a little bit more. And then all I'm gonna do is just go through and do the exact same process with the other two scents so that all of these are made and good to go. I'm so excited for this new candle line, these new scents. Um, very, very excited about them. So I really hope you enjoyed today's Make Candles with me video and listening to me talk and kind of chit chat about, about a bunch of different things. Um, also a huge thank you to Candle Science again for sponsoring today's video. Check out the pinned comment in, in this video in the comment section. I will have all of the fragrances, all of the links to all of the fragrances um, that I used from Candle Science. And um, if you haven't already ordered from them, Highly recommend it. I always can trust them that their oils are high quality. Um, they have a great hot throw, a fantastic hot throw. Um, and I just love everything that they stand for. So um, make sure you go check that out down below. But with that, I think I'm gonna end today's video right here. If you enjoyed today's video, make sure to leave it a big thumbs up as well as subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Also, don't forget to follow me over on Instagram at Memory Box Candle Co. And I will see you in my next video.